in person once you are comfortable doing so. But in the meantime, we're glad that you chose to worship with us online. Uh, if you are new or are visiting, have been visiting for a while but have yet to get plugged in, uh, in the seat right in front of you, there should be uh, a little pamphlet or, or a piece of paper. On that, there's a QR code. Uh, basically, if you go to your photo setting and act like you're going to take a picture of it, and you scan that QR code, uh, it'll take you somewhere, and, and it'll take you to a bunch of information about like downloading the church app, getting plugged in, and uh, you can put in your social security number, and we'll email you all the time, and it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> but uh, uh, but in, in all seriousness, uh, it helps us get you, plug, get you plugged into our church, and we'd love for you to be a part of what God is doing here at First Temple. Uh, now I'd like to direct your attention to the screen behind me. We have some announcements for you about some exciting things going on here at the church. Uh, let's worship together. Good morning, First Temple. I'm Stephen, and we're so glad you've joined us this morning. If today is your first time to be our guest or you want to start connecting to First Temple, please scan one of the QR codes around the building or go to firsttemple.org slash new. There, you'll be able to download the First Temple app, which has weekly scripture for the message, a place to ask for prayer, sermon downloads, digital bulletin, and everything else you need to connect with First Temple. Like most things this year, Trunk or Treat will have a brand new look. We'll not be here at the church, but instead we'll bring Trunk or Treat out into the community. That way we can represent Christ together right in our own neighborhoods, and we'll even get to know our neighbors. We are asking life groups, friends, or individuals to give out treats in their own homes, in their own driveways, their yards. Please wear a mask. The church will provide yard signs and bags for the candy with the church logo on them. It's a great way to do missions in your own neighborhood. Please scan the code in the seats or go to firsttemple.org front slash bulletin to sign up. Yard signs and supply distribution begins today. We also encourage you to remember our safety guidelines. Masks are required for every person first grade and above and must be worn at all times inside the building. Maintain social distancing, and when seated in one of our venues, please keep three seats between parties. September and October is our local and state missions offering emphasis. So far, you've raised $5,830 towards our $15,000 goal to support our local missions partners and the Texas Baptist Mary Hill Davis offering. That's awesome. You can give online at firsttemple.org slash give or through the First Temple app. Be sure to select state and local offering when you give. Join us for a town hall meeting on Tuesday, November 10th at 6.30 p.m., where we will be discussing things happening in our church. Then on Sunday, November 15th, join us for our semi-annual members meeting at 5 p.m. in the Classic Venue. Our new member workshop is an opportunity to learn more about First Temple, including our beliefs, ways to get involved, how to become a member, and a time to meet our staff and ask questions. The next new member workshop is Sunday, November 1st at 6 p.m. at the church. If you would like to attend, please register in the digital bulletin or at firsttemple.org slash join. Let's worship together. Good morning. good morning. It's so good to see all of you here today. And uh, we're grateful for those of you that are in the room. We're grateful for those of you that are joining online. I'm standing here with a mask on, and you can hear me because, yes, I have a microphone. But, yes, we can still make our voices heard through our masks. So today, as we sing together, as we read scripture together, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all right? Um, we're going to sing some songs, but in just a few moments, we're going to read scripture together. It will be responsively. It will be on the screen. So uh, when we get to that point, just speak out loud and clear, okay? The Lord is in this place. He has something to say to us today. Let's worship him together. Would you stand with us as we begin singing, Come Behold the Wondrous Mystery. Christ took on this 
Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. All the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth.
seated. It's in prayer that we genuinely cultivate our, our relationship with the triune God. And it's with his divine word where we merely, where we mine richly for the truth and the learning of the mystery of a living God through the Holy Spirit. It's in worship we approach the presence of a holy God through the blood sacrifice of Christ. And it's through the cross that is made a way for us. So we humbly enter this as a child dearly loved by his all-knowing Father. So let's take a moment, as in Psalm 103, where it says, Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. So let's take a moment and just praise God for who he is. In a time of confession, the Lord is compassionate and gracious and slow to anger and abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. So let's take a moment, just quietly confess our sins to the Lord. Ask him to reveal to us where we have fallen short and make us aware of our iniquities. Let's take just a moment. And thanksgiving. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. So let's give thanks to the Lord, for he has done great things and his grace is ever present. Let's take just a moment and thank him. And then supplication and intercession. Praying for ourselves and others. Um, you may have some specific needs or you may have some friends that you know that they're going through a difficult time or even their family. So whatever those needs are, uh, ask God uh, to reveal those to you. And let's just lift them before the Father as he is the one who can take care of every one of those situations. Almighty God, we thank you for hearing our request today. Our prayers of adoration and praise, our words of thanksgiving. We thank you for your forgiveness and the grace that you have offered. And God, our confessions to you that we bring. So thank you, Jesus, for paying for our debts that we could never pay through your sacrifice on the cross. So, Father, uh, we've offered our request to you, prayers of supplication and intercession. We've spoken the names of those who are near to our hearts and our minds. God, and we're asking for your provision. We lift up those who are sick. We pray for their healing. Pray for those who are struggling with sin. And we ask for your divine grace and deliverance in their lives. For those who are struggling financially, we ask for your provision. For those who are facing trials of many kinds, give them your sustaining grace until they see the other side. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. Thank you for meeting us here in the midst of our worship. We offer our praises to you, for you are worthy of all that we can say and do. 
We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. stand with us as we sing a song that we've been learning, a new hymn, um, Yet Not I, But Through Christ in Me.
For commercial galleries and glass shops, uh, an apprentice would be uh, probably five to ten years. The relationships between uh, the master and the apprentice is um, quite dynamic and the demands on, on both uh, sides of the fence. And there's a lot of coordination between two different people uh, with two different skill sets uh, working at the same time. And there is an etiquette with uh, glass blowing shops where there is no fault uh, with the helper if something goes wrong, because that means the, uh, the master wasn't clear enough in the instructions uh, to make it happen. So uh, they, the thing about those masters is that make it look so easy, um, but it is not. To become a master, uh, at least uh, 10 years, uh, and I don't really consider myself a master at all, uh, but I've been blowing glass for 25 years, and it's uh, it's always a challenge. It's uh, every time you work on something, it's uh, brand new. Apprenticeship, the relationship that Jesus invites us into, you and me, the master inviting his disciple, student, learner, pupil, apprentice into a direct and dynamic relationship. So that over time in this apprentice relationship, you and I as apprentices begin to learn how to live and love like Jesus lived and loved. What an amazing thing it would be to learn to live that way. Jesus never worried about anything, was never in a hurry. Imagine that. Jesus was never running late anywhere. This week, I had the distinct privilege of going out to Howard Payne University and uh, speaking in student chapel this week. I, I'm a graduate of Howard Payne, and it's where Valerie and I met and uh, fell in love. And uh, I got to go back to speak at chapel this week, uh, Wednesday, and we allowed two hours for the drive because Siri said it took two hours, two hours and a minute 
to get to Howard Payne University. I was to speak at 10 o'clock, so we left at 9.30. Left two hours and a little bit of extra time because I always like to get where I'm going to speak uh, in about 30 minutes in advance so that I have time to do a mic check and make sure everything's uh, in order and go to the restroom and make sure my host is not worried about me thinking that I've forgotten or gotten lost or uh, am not coming or whatever. And uh, so we allowed two hours to get there, not realizing that uh, somewhere between Evan and Goldthwaite, and then a second time between Mullen and Zephyr, they would be having road construction and taking the two-lane highway down to just one lane, where we stopped and had to talk to Bubba for a while holding the stop sign while we were waiting for the other traffic to come. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm going to be talking about apprenticeship and living and loving like Jesus, and Jesus is giving me an opportunity to practice. <laughs> Please do not ask Valerie how I did. I think I did better than usual. Imagine living and loving like Jesus. That's what you and I are designed to do. We've been talking about this apprenticeship relationship where we believe in Jesus and seek to be with Jesus and be a learner of Jesus and today to become like Jesus and next week to behave like Jesus. Here's the main idea for the whole series. The more you and I trust, believe in, have confidence in Jesus, seek to be with Jesus, learn from Jesus, the more we will become like Jesus. Now, it's not trying harder. It's not giving forth more sweat equity. It's not even simple behavior modification. It's not looking at a wristband and saying, what would Jesus do, or contemplating what he might do and then trying to mimic it. It is something hugely more than that. It is nothing short of supernatural transformation, spiritual metamorphosis. We become like Jesus because the master transforms his apprentice from the inside out. And he does it by his grace. So this morning, we are called and designed, and God is working on us so that we might become more like Jesus. Take a copy of God's Word and look with me on the church app in John 14. The Gospel of John chapter 14. I, I want us to get to that place where it's been the getting place for us in this series all this series has been in John 14, and we're going to see again today how this text speaks to us. Jesus is speaking with his disciples at the Last Supper, the night before he's to be crucified. And they are down to 11 people because Judas, the betrayer, has already bailed and left. And so the 11 disciples that are left or hearing things coming out of Jesus' mouth they do not like. They've been traveling with him, believing in him, following him for three years. 24-7, 365 for three years. They're excited that they're going to be in the ground floor of this new kingdom on earth he's going to begin. And all of a sudden he starts talking like a crazy man. He talks about leaving them behind and things like dying and sacrificing and all of this. And it is really messing with their minds. And Jesus in John chapter 14 Verse 1 says, do not let your heart be troubled. Guys, don't let this throw you. Believe in God. Believe also in me. The very first sermon in this series, we talked about how Christ calls us to believe, trust in, have confidence in him. Then he says, in my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. He's encouraging these disciples, these apprentices, that being with them and them being with him is a big, big deal to Jesus. Here's what I want you to know. I do not know if you being with Jesus is a big deal, but you being with Jesus is a big deal to Jesus. 
In fact, he guarantees that he will be with us. Even though he was going to be absent physically, bodily from them, he promised the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, the helper, the Spirit of Christ would come in his place. Look in verse 16 of John 14. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. That is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. Jesus reminds us in this passage that we are to believe in Jesus and be with Jesus and learn from Jesus so that we can become like Jesus. Now, I want to point out to you that the purpose of this apprenticeship we've been talking about may be a little different than what you realize. The whole purpose that Jesus invites us into this relationship for is this transformation of our being made like Jesus. In the beginning, we were created, we were made in the likeness, in the image of God. But then sin came into our lives and messed everything up. And from then on, God's plan has been to work his plan and work his work so that we could be restored and brought back to being made in the likeness and image of God. So that we are transformed from the inside out as believers, as we are with Jesus and learn from Jesus, so that we are made into the likeness of Christ, being transformed into the likeness of our master. Now, some people think that the purpose of this apprenticeship is the end product or the byproduct, the living like and loving like Jesus. They think that is the goal. As if it's uh, that we're, uh, you know, if Jesus were an artist or a craftsman or a trade uh, trainer, what he was trying to do is just duplicate his artwork or his handicraft. That, that's not it at all. Paul even says we are the handiwork of Christ. We need to understand that his purpose and his goal is not the byproduct of our living and loving like him. That will come but that is almost sort of anticlimactic because the real purpose of the apprenticeship is to make us more like Christ. Our development, our transformation, our being restored back into his likeness. When uh, my son, Worth, got to be of a certain age, he was tired of watching me mow and trim. He wanted to participate. I had gotten him, when he was very much a toddler, a little mower that would go alongside and make a little whirring sound, and then bubbles would come out the top. He, he was through with that. He wanted to help me mow with my mower and trim with my trimmer. So when he was about eight or nine, we took, by the way, just save your emails, we took all the safety precautions. I mean, listen, okay, I had to answer to his mother. I shouldn't also have to answer to you, okay? And it was satisfying her. So anyway, just save your emails. We took all the safety precautions, and he began to push the mower with me and do the trimmer with me. And I have to tell you something, it took me four times as long to get it done. And I was, Brother Gary, I was frustrated. It slowed me down. I really kind of was wanting to get this done and then get on with my, my Friday, you know, my day off. So I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to be able to get this done, but, but Worth wanted to, wanted to mow with me. Now, in the long run, you know, they didn't last all that long, right? You know, once they hit, you know, it lasted about three or four mowings and trimmings, and then he was like, he was done with that. I had to pay him after that to get him to do it, right? But anyway, for a time there, and I was kind of frustrated with this whole thing of it slowing me down, and the, the Lord tapped me on the shoulder, I'll never forget it, and the Lord spoke to me, over the roar of the lawnmower and said, Joe, your project is not your yard. Your project is your son and your relationship with him. So I began to, whatever we were doing together, mowing, trimming, playing baseball, whatever we did, I began to see it as an avenue for me to pour into my son. I developed things I could do with my daughters as well to pour into their lives. Will you look this way? I want you to hear this. The master 
pours his life into his apprentices. That's what he does. Look in verse 18 through 23 in John chapter 14. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. After a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You will live also. In that day, you will know that I am in the Father and you in me and I in you. The master pours himself into the life of the apprentice. Verse 21, he who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and will disclose myself to him. Now Judas, not Iscariot, wait, you remember that two of the 12 were named Judas, right? And Judas the Iscariot was the betrayer. So there was Judas Iscariot and there was Judas, not Iscariot. Okay, all right, so. Imagine that is your last name. <laughs> so Judas, the other one, said to him, Lord, what then has happened that you are going to disclose yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered, sort of. <laughs> he didn't answer that question, but he answered what he wanted to say. Answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our abode with him. Wow. Jesus and the father together pour themselves into the life of the apprentice, the disciple, the believer, the one who's truly chasing after relationship with the more we seek to be with jesus and learn from jesus the more we learn to live and love his way and the more he pours himself into our lives this is the key to our being able to become like jesus Jesus pours himself into us. We also see that this is exactly the dynamic of relationship between the Father and the Son. Look in verses 10 and 11. Jesus says, Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own initiative, but the Father abiding in me does his work. The Father pours himself into the Son, and the Son and the Father pour themselves into the apprentice. And it has this incredible dynamic effect of us becoming like Jesus. Now, Dallas Willard is a guy that Evan and I have quoted a lot in this series because we each read his book this year, Divine Conspiracy, which is a fantastic book. It's, it's a huge book. It's, it's a challenging book. I, I read it the first time about 20 years ago. I read it again this year, and each time I've read it, it takes me about three months to read it because it is, it is heady stuff. But he is such the expert on this idea of apprenticeship. We've also talked a lot about a young pastor out in Portland, Oregon, in his 30s named John Mark Comer, who is just this savantly brilliant believer and speaker of God's truth. And uh, these guys uh, have written some great stuff on this topic. Dallas Willard talks about this idea of Jesus pouring himself into us as we seek to get closer to him and do what he says do, and he more and more discloses us, like the text says, himself to us. I mean, look at that. He says uh, uh, in verse 21, he who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and disclose myself to him. It's the idea of the closer we get and the more we participate in this apprentice relationship, the more Jesus is going to pour himself in, and the more he is going to do that, the more we are going to become like him. What Dallas Willard says is that it's this abundance of, obedience flywheel effect. Now, I'll talk about that a little bit more, but I, I want to show you a little video about flywheels and how they work. They are a tool to enhance 
uh, speed and power. So let's look at the video, and you'll have to read the narration for yourself. There is no audio. It's a flywheel, weighs about 5,000 pounds, so you can read from there, okay? Key point here. The momentum of the thing kicks in your favor at breakthrough. And it's an unstoppable momentum. An overall accumulation of effort. As we believe in Jesus and seek to be with Jesus, and learn from Jesus, and obey what Jesus said for us to do, to practice the things he taught us to practice, we get closer. He pours more and more in, and Dallas Willard describes it as an abundance, obedience, flywheel effect. This is what he means. You and I, the more we we seek to be with Jesus, and learn from Jesus, and read the scriptures and learn what he said and observe what he did, the more we are overwhelmed with the abundance of love that Jesus pours out toward us, and we become the kind of people that want to do what Jesus said do. And as we attempt to do that, he doesn't expect perfection. It's not about the result. It's just about our attempt, about our desire. The more we seek to do those things he said do, the more he discloses himself and the more he pours himself into. And then we receive even more abundance and we want to obey even more. And so he gives us even more and there's more abundance. And it's abundance and obedience and abundance and obedience and abundance and obedience that kicks in as a flywheel eventually. And we become more and more and more like Christ. Don't get this wrong. It's not about earning it. Grace is still all that matters. You and I could never, ever try to convince God to pour himself into us. It's not by what we've earned. But effort is something that we do. It's something that we participate in, our part, to allow God to work inside of us. Now, Paul talks about it in a little bit different way. If you look over in Romans chapter 8, here's how Paul says it. Paul says in chapter 8, verses 28 and 29, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son. Conformed. Made to be in the same form. To morph something into something it is not by itself. That's the idea. Then over in chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, Paul says it this way. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Paul says we have control over the first part of that. Don't any longer be conformed. Don't be morphed to the ways of the world. That's in our control. You and I have the ability to say no to being formed or morphed into the ways of the world. We do not have to go along with the stream. We don't have to do that. We can say no to it. And Paul is saying don't do that. Instead, be transformed. But get this. We don't have any control over that except to give in to it. It's not, he doesn't say get transformed. He doesn't say transform yourself. He says be transformed for you Uh, grammar people, it's in the passive, and so it is something that happens to us, that we allow to happen to us by God working in our life. We can be transformed. It is the work of God in us by his grace. Now, next week, as we wrap up the series, we're going to actually talk about that byproduct of living like and loving like. We're going we're gonna to read a, a mind-blowing verse in John chapter 14. You go back there, I'll show it to you. You can read it in advance. We've skipped over it because we wanted to save it till the very last Sunday. But John chapter 14 verse 12 says this. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And even greater works than these, he will do. That's mind-blowing. That's our potential. 
that becomes our capacity, even becomes our second nature. And we'll even kind of slip over into chapter 15 and talk about the fruit that comes from our being the branches in right relationship with the vine. A little different metaphor there. Not apprentices, but as part of the vine. But that's for next week. I want you to see that that's just the byproduct. Because here's the truth. As you and I believe in Jesus and seek to be with Jesus and learn from Jesus and attempt to practice living like he taught us to live, the more he transforms us and makes us in his likeness and we become like Jesus and then the behaving like Jesus is just the default that happens because we've become like Jesus. It's an automatic deal. And so this morning, I want to ask you to think about some things. The first thing I want to ask you to think about is this. Whether this is your first Sunday hearing this series on apprenticeship or you've been here or watched online for all four of the sermons so far in this series, I want to ask you this question. If you do a self-assessment, if you conduct a self-assessment, where are you as an apprentice? Where are you on the path? It's not necessarily linear A, B, C, D, but it is fairly much that way. Where are you? Maybe today your action step is that you need to believe. You need to actually start your apprentice relationship with Jesus as your master. You need to place your belief, your faith, have trust in, have confidence in Jesus as your Savior, and start this apprentice relationship. My encouragement to you is this, believe in Jesus. Maybe you're already a believer, but you're struggling with believing. You have some very, very serious doubts. You've even thought about kind of chunking it and going some other direction. Maybe you're a lot like these guys were around the table thinking, you know, I'm not sure Jesus wasn't a crazy man. I've been following him for a while, but I just don't know if I can keep doing that. My encouragement to you is re-up, keep on, keep at believing. It doesn't mean try harder, it just means don't quit. Don't quit. Maybe your action step today is different. You're, you're there. You, you, you are believing. You, you are keeping on believing, even though sometimes it's hard. We encourage you to ruthlessly carve out time and space to be with Jesus. And I want you to hear this. This isn't your little daily quiet time. This isn't for you to just... Uh, you know, fire up your favorite devotional to read or open up that favorite little devotional that just kind of gets your little day going. Or I'm talking about spending time with you. I'm not even talking about listening to sermons or podcasts, even great ones like mine. I'm talking about spending time directly with Jesus. That was a joke. Come on, lighten up, all right? Okay, y'all know that. I mean, my wife's here. She heard me say that, so you don't have to worry about me, okay? All right? She'll straighten all that out when we get to the house, okay? All right? but spending time directly with Jesus. We've encouraged you last week to begin to think about spending time in the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and the book of Acts, to really hone in on the words of Jesus and the actions of Jesus. In those five books, there are 117 chapters, and if you were to take those 117 chapters and read one per day, you could do that in a year's time three times with some left over. Better yet, what you could do is from now to the end of 2020, just focus on the Gospel of John. Go back to John 1 and begin to read through the Gospel of John and think about all that Jesus said and mark down all the things Jesus did. Write it down. And then January, the first quarter of 2021, go to Matthew. Second quarter, go to Mark. Third quarter, go to Luke. Fourth quarter, go to the book of Acts. And then 2022, start over. And just really hone in on what Jesus said and what Jesus did. But today, maybe your step is really engaging this flywheel plan. And that is thinking seriously about some things that Jesus, you know, is teaching you, you need to practice. You need to obey. Again, he's not expecting perfection. He wants desire to follow. Attempt. Your part, effort, engagement in the relationship. 
by doing something the way the master taught you to do it. That's what obedience is. And so I want to encourage you to start with the easy stuff and build up to the tough stuff. And let Jesus begin to transform you in your life. In fact, if you think about it, you might even, how do you make a list? I make a list about making all the, and I usually start with the thing that's the easiest, but before that, I add to the list something I've already completed so I can mark a line through. Anybody else do that right here? Okay. Okay. Am I the only one? All right. So maybe you would take that thing you do fairly well already, and then you would take it to God and see if you could become a master of it. And then let him add this, and then let him add that, and then let him add this, and let him add that. And before long, you receive abundance and obedience and abundance and obedience. Abundant. Engage the flywheel effect. Because Christ wants you to be like him. So whatever you need to do in this apprentice relationship, it's up to you to take that next step. Would you do that? Thanks for watching online. Thanks for being here this morning. Gary, lead us in some more worship before we go this morning, all right? Many of us have sung this song for many, many years. As I was singing it this morning after the sermon that I had heard in the first service, I realized um, that I heard these words anew again, almost as if I had heard it for the first time. So as we sing this this morning, I'm going to ask you to think about the words. Don't just, just don't sing them out of rote, out of familiarity. but may they be new again. Would you stand with us as we sing? Oh, the
thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you to all of you who are in the room. What a joy it is to see you and to look into your eyes. Thank you so much for joining with us online this morning, for worshiping with us. No, as we've said several times this morning, but no, there's room in the room for you. Um, we'd love to have you join with us back here when you are um, ready and comfortable. I want to say thank you also for your continued sacrificial giving as we give back to the Lord just a portion of what he has done. For those of you that have brought an offering this morning, the offering boxes are by the door. If you want to drop in your offering, feel free to do that as you leave this morning. You can continue to give online as well. <clears throat> as I have thought about you this morning, and I thought about worship, and I thought about the songs that we have sung, and I look out among you, I want to share a benediction with you this morning. May the Lord who heals, heal all your diseases. May the Lord who gives you peace and comfort in trying days, shower you with this unending peace and comfort. May the Lord who carries your burdens when you give them to him, May you give them freely, for his burden is easy and his yoke is light. May the one who is in front of us, calling us into the future, may you follow him this week, trusting because he is faithful and true. He is our strength and our redeemer, and he will walk with you every day of your life. May you go and be the church with assurance that the Lord is there. Amen.